Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay Cruz and welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm gonna show you how I use the Jackson Audio Bloom. Before we get started, you know the deal. Please do all of the things that help this channel grow. Like this video, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you get notifications every single time I upload a video. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, it's no secret that I have definitely been entertaining the idea of building another pedal board, especially after last week's video, receiving the Rockboard pedal board. It's been kind of a game changer for me where I can finally, I don't know, just really start piecing the board together in the way that I like it. But I'm exploring different options and therefore getting different pedals in and out of the studio all of the time. And I figure while I have access to some of them, I can maybe put the camera on, do some reviewing and show you some of the tones that I've been getting. And one of the very first kind of pedals that I started checking out were compression pedals. Cause as I mentioned in the past, though I appreciated what the Deep Six compressor did from Walrus Audio, in fact, I loved it. I was looking for something with a little more versatility, something that kind of wowed me a little bit more. And I've had my eye on a few different brands that have uh, you know, taken over the market within the last few years. And I wanted to judge for myself. And one of those pedals was the Jackson Audio Bloom. Now keep in mind, I am playing version one of this pedal today. I think the only difference to my understanding is that version two has MIDI. Now this pedal has the reputation of being one of the most versatile compressors out there, and I have to agree. Uh, it has, of course, compression at his, at, at, as it's advertised, but it also has two other features in it that I'm not even sure I even knew about until I looked into the pedal myself. That's an EQ option and a bloom option, which is essentially kind of like a boost. And the even more intense thing, which makes it totally versatile, is how many different versions of compression and boost or bloom that you actually have. Now the EQ is pretty straightforward. It's a three band EQ, but I have to tell you, it's one of the most amp like EQs I've ever tried. And if the all of the Jackson Audio products are like that, then I totally give them credit. For me, I've never played a pedal or used a pedal that gave me the kind of EQ fle flexibility that these kind of pedals are giving me, the Jackson Audio ones. Uh, again, the only thing I can compare it to is just like an amp. I don't think I can really explain it as much as you need to try it for yourself. Trust me. With that said, I want to give you a quick little sound test on what I'm doing here. Now, I'm not going to show you every single feature that this thing has because this will be a super long video. And you guys know how I do. I dial up tones and then show you how. I would use it in a live situation or in a recording situation. So I'm just gonna give you some of the tones that I have dialed up here so far. I'll put a photo of the pedal so you can see exactly where my settings are, as well as talk you through how I'm incorporating them in a live situation. So let's give you a clean sound first, no compression. This is guitar straight into the amp. Now, let's incorporate the Bloom pedal. I personally fell in love with the Magenta, which is, I guess, the R&B setting. Uh, oddly enough, it just suits my needs a little bit more. All of them sound absolutely great and are totally usable. Really quick, I'm gonna play my clean without the pedal and then turn the Magenta setting on again so you just have a quick comparison. So clean without anything on. Now the Magenta. So what you might be hearing is a little bit of squashing and that squashing immediately kind of tells your ears there's a volume drop, it's not quite the same. And that may be true, but 
um, it's also kind of necessary. So you can always bring the volume up, but I'm using the HX Stomp today for my amp, so I don't want to hit the HX Stomp too hard, but I'm going to show you how we kind of boost those levels a little bit in a few. So that's the Magenta side. Now you have to hit both the buttons at the same time to access the EQ side. Now having the EQ on actually now activates that bottom row of knobs, which is bass, middle, and treble. And man, again, so intuitive it just acts like an amp it's i just can't explain it so here's my sound with just the compressor on now we're going to add the eq So immediately you heard the volume boost up again, probably now louder than my actual tone. So I guess I kind of lied by saying that I didn't want to hit the HX stomp too hard. I'm just really digging that sound. It enhanced frequencies that I kind of would look that I would look for when plugging into an amp, right? So now what it's doing is, is it's allowing me to not focus so much on the settings on the HX stomp, and it's allowing me the opportunity to have like a physical knobs in front of me that I can alter little by little depending on my mood or the guitar that I'm using. And in this case, uh, you know, using a, a T-style guitar, um, it sounds great. It's enhancing the frequencies that I personally like. So I love, love what I'm getting so far. But that's not all. It also has the bloom side. And the bloom side on this version at the very least works where if you turn it up, the more you turn it, it turns into different colors, right? Um, so obviously the more lower you have it, it has the more organic sound of just kind of slightly boosting what you already have up. And the more you push it, it'll really go into a, you know, a distorted type of mode because it's actually pushing your signal. So I want to show you the setting that I currently have it in relatively low, as you can see on the screen. Here's again, compression and EQ only. Now let's add the boost or the bloom. So as you can hear, it it's kind of pushing a little bit. It's taking it into where I would say first stage gain territory for me. So in this particular pedal, you have compression, EQ, and bloom. And I honestly wouldn't mind leaving all three of those things on as an always on for my personal tone. The best part about this pedal, and this is still version one, we're not even talking about MIDI incorporation, which is in the version two, you can actually use all of those components separately so if you didn't want the compression and you just wanted the EQ or you just wanted the bloom or whatever all of that stuff can be done separately so I'm gonna go backwards a little bit and remove some of the effects here so let's take off compression first and this is just EQ and the bloom <laughs> thickens and fattens up your tone in such a really cool way. So even if you don't want to add compression, I think the bloom side is worth is worth it. I think even for a first stage gain. But yeah, let's move on. Now I'm going to put on the EQ, just the EQ by itself. <laughs> Again, that EQ, man, is hitting like it. It hits like an amp. I just have no other words or no, uh, no other ways to explain it. The way you can dial in a, a, a specific frequency, like it says bass, middle, and treble, but it really is bass, middle, and treble. It's not a joke. It's not like, I don't know. I've, I've played guitar pedals that they have three band EQs, and you can pretty much, you'd have to push all of the EQs dramatically one way or another to hear a true difference and then you're fighting with this in-between thing and it can get flubby and especially with grip pedals but this one this one is fantastic for those of you who don't know i actually love compression so much that i keep it on as an always on so i want to turn on really quickly some grit so you can hear how it plays with grip pedals so i'm going to quickly turn on the compression side the magenta and the eq and then we'll turn on like a first stage light gain drive here's what the magenta compression and the eq sounds like 
Now first stage gain. Now I want to throw the bloom on to see how it interacts with me pushing that gain a little bit. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that sounds really, really good. So guys, this pedal is the truth. Uh, I can't even, I can't even hide the grin right now. All right, so it, it, Jackson Audio, no joke, take my money. Uh, I'm broke now, but take my money. Before I give you all of my opinions, pros and cons by the way, I want you to hear something. I'm gonna leave my overdrive pedal on, compression, the EQ, and the bloom. So it's boosting into the overdrive, okay? I'm on my bridge pickup, so a single coil pickup, and I'm gonna show you something. Dead quiet, okay? I don't think I've ever played a compressor that was this silent. Shout out to True Tone because they have a compressor, the Route 66, the compressor and drive in one, and that compressor actually has a little bit of a noise gate on there, and that you put it, it's very nice, very unnoticeable, and that's probably the most quiet compressor I've ever had because it, you know, you have the noise gate, but this doesn't have that. This is like unreal how silent this compressor is. I'm super impressed with it. Alright guys, so it's opinion time. What do I actually think about this pedal like I'm gonna say anything bad about it? Um, well, let's try to look for a con. Here are some of the cons. I messed up and bought the version 1. That's the con because I can get so much out of this pedal by simply turning stuff on and off. However, the con legitimately is that it's kind of difficult and challenging to get to some of those options without you know doing a bunch of maneuvers so for example if you wanted to try the um the orange side or the blue side or the green side of the compressor you have to hold down that compression but uh, knob or switch hold it down for a little while until it blinks and then you can scroll through the different compressor settings that are on there or the different compressions that are in there the different chips i think they call them right to turn the eq on and off you have to hit both uh, switches at the same time. So am I gonna give this one up for a version 2? The answer is no I don't feel like I definitely would need that MIDI option for this right now I definitely am liking all of the different tones that I'm getting from this and I think it's worth you picking it up and hearing some of the tones that You can get from it yourself and hearing it just live and messing with it You will definitely be impressed by it. So I guess that leads me to the pros about this thing. It's super sturdy uh, it's a top mounted pedal, which is great. They're bulky, but they're very compact. So they're a little taller than your average pedal, but very sleek on, on the sides where it counts, right? Because you want to be able to push pedals, especially in a smaller pedal board, like I'm interested in building. Um, you want to be able to stack a bunch of pedal, a bunch of pedals close together. And I think they make a product that allows you to do that. We didn't even talk about the fact that it has a blend knob, which you can blend your own tone in there. I mean, it's just such a great product. I can't, I can't knock it in any kind of way. So if you're on the fence at all about picking one of these Jackson Audio Blooms up, ah, man, I can't tell you not to get it. It's so good, it's too good. I got this one used, which is why I have the version one. It was a little bit more affordable than buying a version two, and it certainly was more affordable than buying a version two brand new. Um, they will run you a little over 300 US dollars, if I'm not mistaken. But if you think about it, in the past, I've had setups like this where I've used compression and then I've had EQ style uh, pedals and then I've had always on boosting style pedals. This has that and EQ and compression all in one. If I bought those pedals separately, it would be way more than $300. So you're kind of getting a really good deal, especially in the version two where you can now access all of its parameters and settings on the fly via MIDI. MIDI, it's insane. So again, kudos to Jackson Audio 
killed it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comment section your thoughts of this pedal. And if you'd be interested in hearing all of the different uh, compressor settings that they have in here or the compressor sounds, I did more of a first look almost impression version of that right now. But I think we can dive all into it if I get enough people who say they want to hear that. Again, please do all of the things that help this channel grow. Like this video, comment and subscribe below. Hit the bell notification icon so you get alerts every single time I upload a video. Feel free to check out some of the links in the description box. They are affiliate links which help this channel out just a little bit at the end of the day. There's also a direct link where you can donate to this channel directly. You could buy me a cup of coffee. You could buy me a new pedal even. That would be really, really nice of you. Very. Thanks again for watching and until next week.